David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have for you a fairly new release from Estherbrook, and that would be the SD Scarlet Oversize. I've previously reviewed a couple of different versions of the SD. Most recently, there was the Maraschino, which I cared for enough to pick one up myself. Uh, but this will be the first time I'm taking a look at the oversized version of an SD release. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Estherbrook SD Scarlet Oversize. I'm going to talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Uh, thanks go out to the good folks at Kenro Industries, who are the owners and distributors of the Estherbrook line of pens. The pen arrives in this retro-looking box. Uh, inside the actual is the actual box, which uh, has this uh, kind of neat knit exterior. Um, inside there is a spare cartridge. Um, there was an Estherbrook branded polishing cloth, which is nice. Uh, and then there is a little card with some company history as well as a QR code that you could use to access the warranty information. Um, from a manufacturer's perspective, I always thought the use of a QR code was a smart idea. It's much less expensive to produce a, a small card like this or even a business card rather than an entire manual. Uh, the code directs you to a web page with the necessary information. And then we have the pen. This is the... Estherbook SD Scarlet Oversize. Now, I'll show you this again during the size comparisons, uh, but this is the standard SD. That's the Maraschino model that I picked up. And you can see here that it is just a, a bit smaller than the oversized model. Uh, the SD Scarlet is a cigar shape, and it's available in two different trims. One has gold trim, and then this model here with palladium trim. Um, according to the company's documentation, the SD Scarlet is inspired by the golden age of Hollywood. They say it harkens back to the old glamour and the silver screen starlets who set Los Angeles as well as a few men's hearts ablaze. Uh, the oversized body is made from a premium vibrant red crushed acrylic with hints of blue. I will say that in general, a crushed acrylic look isn't my favorite, but I don't mind this one. Uh, basically what is done is, I, I think it's basically like twice baked potatoes. The resin is made and then chopped up into pieces and then reformed with an additional acrylic in order to bind everything together. In the case of this pen, I believe they started with the red resin and then they used the blue resin as the binder during the reforming, which is why you can see the blue ba basically in the cracks between the pieces of red. Uh, let's take a look at the top of the cap. Uh, it comes to a rounded point. The cap is one piece with a slot where the clip protrudes. Um, the clip is rather basic in design, uh, but it fits well with the aesthetics of this pen. Uh, at the end of the clip, it is engraved with the company name, Estherbrook, and filled with a silver lacquer. There is a small step down to the barrel, which then tapers down at a fairly even angle until you reach the end, which is rounded and slightly more narrow than the top of the cap. The cap unscrews with only half a rotation, which is nice. Uh, this pen has what Estbrook calls a cushion cap, which is a spring-loaded inner cap. Um, this is a feature utilized on a number of pens, like several from a Platinum or even Launcher. Um, it's used so a tighter seal is created around the nib, preventing it from being exposed to more air, which would potentially cause it to dry out faster. Uh, with this particular mechanism, I find the spring to be a bit strong. Um, this is where the spring engages, about a third of an inch from the cap engaging with the threads. At that point, you need to be a bit intentional about applying a bit of pressure in order to, to cap the pen. Um, I will say that when I operate this cap, I make it a point to have the ends of the pen in my palm to prevent the spring from shooting out either end of the pen. Um, you can see here that if I pull the cap down and let it slip, it actually almost shoots the cap right off the pen. Um, I do care for this technology, but I just think the rate of spring on this pen could use uh, be a little less strong. Um, once you have safely removed the cap, Underneath, we have a number six Yovo stainless steel nib. On this palladium trim model, the nib is silver in color and it is gold on the gold trim version. 
the nib is available in extra fine, fine, medium, broad, 1.1, and many retailers are also offering custom grinds from Gina Salarino, uh, those being the journaler and the scribe grinds. Uh, those are an additional $40. Gina does great work, and those nibs are very interesting. And here's a look at the plastic feed. The section begins with the slightest of flares and angles up only slightly until you reach the large blocky metal threads. And then there's a stair step up to the remainder of the barrel. While I find this pen is comfortable in the hand with this oversized model, I wish the section was just slightly thicker. I find that my grip does spill over to the threads, but I don't find them to be sharp or uncomfortable. And the edges of the stair step transition to the barrel are smooth enough not to cause any discomfort. The pen is long enough to use unposted. I can't really say that this pen posts. It just kind of sits here on the back of the barrel, not very securely. But with the oversized dimensions of this pen, I prefer to use this pen unposted anyways. The SD is a cartridge converter pen. It utilizes standard international cartridges and a converter is provided. Estabrook also released a scarlet ink in coordination with this pen. I'll show you what that looks like during the writing sample. The Estabrook SD Scarlet Oversized is available at a wide number of retailers and sells for $200. I feel that that's a very reasonable price for what you receive with this pen. For comparison, the standard size sells for $156. I mentioned it previously, but I do own a standard size model and I really enjoy it. I think that one of these days I need to pick up one of these oversized as well. The size of the pen really works for me. Okay, now it is time for some measurements size comparisons, and a writing sample where I'll show off the new Estabrook Scarlet ink. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Estabrook SD Scarlet Oversize. I want to give you another look at that resin. It is rather nice looking with the blue intertwined with the different shades of red. There is a bit of a chatoyance on some of the red as well. But in regard to some size comparisons, this is what it looks like with a standard SD model. Uh, and then this is what it looks like with a Montegrappa Elmo. Uh, and then here it is with a Sailor King of Pen in Ebonite. It's fairly similar in size. And then in regard to a few other pens, here it is with a Diplomat Elox and a Pelican M805. And then finally here it is with a Delta Dolce Vita Oversize. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, here is what it looks like with the Elmo. And then this is the standard SD. And then here it is with that Diplomat Elox. Here we go with the writing sample for the Estabrook. SD. Scarlet Oversize. This is a medium stainless steel nib. And as I mentioned, the ink that I'm going to be using is Estabrook Scarlet. This is what the ink looks like. It is a nice, vibrant, kind of orangish red. I did say that on this kind of cheaper paper that I used for these cards, that it did have a fair amount of feathering to it. I did it once and it had a lot of feathering. And so I tried it again and it had the same feathering. And now that spot there was more of some moisture. But uh, this is what it looks like against Three Oysters Chili Red. And then here it is with a more vibrant kind of redder red, which is the Diamine Poppy Red. This is what the ink bottle looks like. It comes in 50 milliliters. It's a nice bottle with a nice large neck. It has the Estabrook Eternity logo, uh, which is basically E's that are mirrored. So think of an E here and then an E here. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. I 
I do find this medium denim to be a bit on the rigid side. Um, it is a bit on the scratchy side with a little bit uh, a little bit too much feedback, I would say. Um, if I were to own this pen, I'd probably just try to smooth out the nib just slightly. Um, it's just a minor thing, but you can, especially on the side strokes, really hear that. Um, in regard to ink flow, it's decent on here. And in regard to some reverse writing... It is rather sharp in regard to fast writing. The feed has no issues in keeping up. So there we have the Esterbrook SD Scarlet Oversize. Um, as I mentioned, I do like the size of this pen. Uh, I do feel that one of these oversized models will find its way into my collection one of these days. Uh, and I think it's an, an interesting addition to the Esterbrook lineup. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.